GitHub starter net scripts include in CloudNet, and they all generally function. System D is the one that's problem that is really the rawest. I mean, just because I've just started using it, and it's just been cutting over. But it canonically, or Ubuntu is moving to System D by default in the in fifteen oh four. So, and that's that. That's a lot of work. I mean, a lot of work's done, but I would be not truthful if I told you I don't expect any bugs. <laughs> my my feeling is it took four years to get Upstart very good, and I kind of think that we we're in for some more time. Hopefully, we can get 1604 to be very good with system D integration. But changing a mo major component of your system isn't easy. Mm. So you mentioned there's no user ID on the image when you're deploying it, and you also said you set your keys up ahead of time. And I'm trying to figure out you know, how this works in terms of sequence. So you're throwing an image somewhere, and as you're booting it up, you have to give it a user ID. You have to provide the keys. Is that somehow built into your, your normal scripting that it provides that, or where does that come in, I guess? Uh, here, let's see. Yeah, well, um, so, let's see. This is the instance I launched. Let's see. Um, so he was named, he was launched with that as the key name now previously I had, um, let's see, um, there. I had uploaded these keys, these are my public keys, right? And you take a public key and you, and I registered, you know, this one under that name, da da da, whatever. Um, and I launched that one with, with brickies, which means I can't SSH into it right now. <laughs> um, Maybe I can. And what happened? I don't think I can. Yeah. And my my home system is named Brickies. This one is named Bart, and so I'm out. <laughs> um, it's possible. Anyway, um, let's see. Let's see. So here, this default user and that, so that the image has this config built into it, and it says the default user is going to be Ubuntu. Um, and so CloudNet comes up, and you can you can define multiple users and multiple groups that you want, but the default user's name is Ubuntu. It locks its password. That's its get goes. Um, so, and on on like a Fedora image, their default images say instead of Ubuntu, they say Fedora there. Um, actually. If you ever are in the position where you don't know what that default user was, okay, go there where we've been. Um, well, if I launch any of these with this key. If you if you try to go in as root, it, CloudNet sets it up such that it says, um, "Don't come in as root. Come in as this user," and it tells you the default user that you should come in as. Um, and that happens. Yeah, I can't get into any of these otherwise. But yeah. So yeah, you CloudNet. The the key is that CloudNet is inside, and it is it is the thing that you kind of talking to and saying, "Give me these things." But by default, almost if you, as long as you specify an SSH key, you'll be able to get in. 
and um, but you can definitely launch an instance on Amazon or anywhere without specifying an SSH key. I think Azure's GUI says, hey, you probably can't get in here. Do you want to do that? And you have to say yes, but um, yeah. <laughs> it could be perfectly reasonable to launch an instance that you can't SSH. Yeah, it. yes, and providing it with user it data that... run a service. Yep, yeah, and provides it, and you provide user data that runs and it, it, yeah. it can shut itself off and, you know, publish its data elsewhere, right? Yeah, it yeah. makes... We have lots of systems that have no users on them. Yeah, uh, cool. Anything else? Sure. So do the images then contain the actual cloud in it software that's yep. ready to go? Yeah. So our on Ubuntu we make our we make cloud images available um, and you can download these are daily builds, but you can download those and the cloud cloud is inside of them. There's also a, a data source called NoCloud. Like I listed the data sources, Google, um, Azure, all the uh, Amazon, OpenStack. There's one called NoCloud. Um, and I use the, you can use the NoCloud to like to launch to launch instances with that like on a local system or something. Where so no cloud is basically a data source that is a, di a, a disk that has a file called user data on it and metadata on it. So you attach the secondary disk, cloud and it comes up, looks for it, says, "Oh look, here's the user data I was supposed to do." So you can basically pretend to have your own cloud, or you you know interact with those images the way you would on Amazon, Azure, blah blah blah, by by just doing it in a to a VM to use KVM if you you know if you're more familiar with that and that that allows you to iterate faster to develop faster too and then also I guess our Ubuntu's images for LXC also have cloud inside and LXC can feed in user data and metadata so you can also develop the same thing that you would interact with on Amazon you can do in LXC. Anything else? I think we're getting really tight on time. Here. Okay, let's get out of here. So thank you very much.